What's up guys, this is Robin with MacSources.com and today we're going to do a quick video tour of ScreenFlow 8 and all of its brand new features. So let's go ahead and get it started up. You'll see here that this is the welcome screen whenever you first start up the program. Um, you have the option to select one of these links down here. They are click clickable. What's new will take you to a web page that has all of its new features for ScreenFlow 8. Get help will obviously take you to support. Watch tutorials will um, give you the option to watch any tutorials you might need. You can also choose to send diagnostic and usage information back to ScreenFlow. I choose not to do that. Um, with new recording, you have the option to, of course, with ScreenFlow, uh, one of the main things with it is that it is an excellent uh, way to capture what's going on on your screen while you're doing it. Um, you can record from your desktop, an iOS device if one's connected, uh, video camera, audio, and then uh, computer audio. Um, you have the option to select if you've got two different monitors. The color LCD is actually my MacBook Pro. The uh, Biotech is my uh, attached monitor. It's the 32-inch HD monitor, and it's actually the one I'm using right now. So then you've also got new document, which this is where if you're familiar with Final Cut Pro and you've used editing programs before, this is like setting up a new project. So there are lots of different presets that you can choose from. You can also customize your own preset. Um, I have this set at uh, the same settings that my iPhone's recording at because the video clip I'll be using was actually used, taken with my iPhone. And then you would select uh, this little document icon right here to pull up your new project. Recent documents would have show any documents that you had been working on. And the new from template is actually one of the brand new features of ScreenFlow 8. Um, you can see here I've got two different files. Template test was just something that I was uh, kind of messing around with just to see how the template would work. And then this one I actually have set up to add some media to. Um, what this will do is um, you can put in different video elements, different callouts to a, a template and save it out so that you can use it later. This is really good if you do a, um, you know, a, a podcast or a video that has a lot of similar elements in it that you do like on a weekly basis or something like that. It really saves a lot of time. So when you select one of the templates, then you tell the uh, the program where you want to record from. I just selected my 32 inch monitor again and then where you want to record audio from if you want to record audio if you want to capture your computer audio and then you hit start and then it's going to come up with this preparing to record and give you a prompt so that it, you know when your actions are going to be recording and, and capturing. I'm just going to do a couple little uh, things here and then you go up to this little camera icon up here and hit stop record and it should bring up your project. And there it is. And this clip right here is what I just captured. And if you move your marker over, then you can see where I, you know, did a couple things and then told it to stop recording. <laughs> um, and you'll see that I've got it in between two different pieces of media that were already in here. Um, and this clip right here was actually a placeholder. And what it looks like when you create one, I'll take it to the end of this timeline here, you go up to insert, template placeholder clip, and then you can choose screen recording, camera, or iOS device. I chose screen recording, and you hit insert, and it'll show up kind of like that. And then you can extend the clip if you know that you want it to be like a 30 second clip. Um, it, it acts just the same way as any other media clip would in ScreenFlow. So you have the option of actually you know, putting in and out points and all that kind of uh, stuff. But what's really cool about this is you can save it and you can put it uh, in between other clips. You can take this clip and move it down here. And then move both these guys up here. And then you can save this whole project out as a new template. You go save as template, you name it, you save it. And then the next time, close that out. Next time you go to new, your new template's gonna be right in there. And you go through the same process and then your recorded media will go into that template, that, that template placeholder clip. So this is actually a really, really great option for uh, anybody who does 
you know, reoccurring videos, and uh, it's, it's just great to get it started and easy that way. Um, one of the other things I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start a new document here so that you can see some of the other features of ScreenFlow. Um, I am going to import some video. And something that's a little different than uh, other programs, Final Cut Pro is another program that I'm really familiar with, so you might hear me refer to it quite a bit. But um, instead of going to the file menu and inserting video from there, you go to insert. And then it's got these options like text box, annotation, template placeholder. If you go to choose, then it'll bring up your finder window. And then I've got. I'm going to actually grab video that I did for a Western Digital My Passport Drive. So you'll see here in this um, clip that it's you've actually got a visual representation of what's going on in the video. And this is really great to be able to scan through the clip and be able to see, okay, right here is where I took the cable out and extended it and showed it off. And that's a place that I want to break the clip up. So that's, that's something that's... Uh, that's brand new. Um, they call it track thumbnails. Um, so it's it's just a much easier way to look at your project as you're going through it and making editing decisions. Um, I This is actually something that uh, Final Cut Pro also has and I really enjoy that. So let's say that you're finished with your project and you've made a few editing decisions and you're ready to export it. So what you do is you go to export and then you've got your automatic options um, which, you know, the pretty standard. Um, but then if you go over to manual and you select one of the presets, there are quite a few more presets to work with. You'll see there's an Instagram preset and then there's also an animated PNG. Those are brand new in ScreenFlow 8. Um, the Instagram preset is obviously something that will allow you to uh, export your project for Instagram um, and it'll be optimized for that. So if you select that, these are the settings that it will uh, push out and then it's ready for Instagram. Um, ScreenFlow will automatically select the best settings for uploading Instagram. You can still change this stuff around if you want. If you're going to be using it for Instagram, it's probably best to leave it with that. But I'm going to cancel out of that for now. Um, the other thing that's really great um, and is a new feature is quick narrations. This is also something that is present in Final Cut Pro where you can record a voiceover and it'll automatically appear on your timeline. So in order to do that, you want to do narration. And you'll see this will pop up right here and it gives you the different options for um, what you want to record from and how long you want it to uh, how long you want the duration to be, um, and if you want the audio that's already existing in your timeline to be muted. That is something I would suggest you do. I've made that mistake several times. So you would do that and then you hit record and then it's going to give you the same prompt and then it's going to start recording an audio clip and you can see it right here. And when you're done you just hit stop. So now I'm going to show off the stock media library. So if you go over here to the inspector. If you're familiar with ScreenFlow, all of these options are for editing and callouts and annotations. And then down here you've got, this is uh, files, your file browser. Um, and then this is for audio. And this is a global library. And then this one is the stock media library, which if you subscribe to it, then it's $60 a year which is actually uh, quite a good bargain. Uh, I did some pricing outside of um, the ScreenFlow option and for example, the iStock Photo Library um, has an annual subscription that if you want unlimited access, it's $70 a month. And so this, this option to have uh, over 500,000 uh, clips and media and audio available to you right inside your uh, program is actually pretty incredible. Um, You'll see that this is just a sampling. Uh, this is just what's included with ScreenFlow 8. The thing I like about this is the audio that they include. Because you'll see this is a minute and a half long, which is perfect for the piece I'm working on. It'll take a second to load. And there we go. So Styles is another feature that's um, wonderful if you are 
doing a lot of uh, tweaking on your clips, color corrections, uh, things that, you know, you've, you've added filters to different video clips. Um, this is, again, this is another feature that Final Cut Pro actually has. But in order to use it, what you do is you copy your clip, and then you would select the next clip, and come up here to the edit menu, and go to paste properties, and then you can choose to paste the video, audio, call out, video filters, and audio filters. Um, and uh, like I said, this is just a really great option for being able to match the different styles between um, the different clips that you have in your project. So this has been just a really quick overview of ScreenFlow 8 and its new features um, and what it can do for you as a, an editor. Um, this is Robin with MacSources.com and we invite you to take a look at our full written review on MacSources.com and don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to get all the latest news and reviews. Thanks for watching. <laughs>